It's a mother load because they went all over Europe and looked at all the coronary disease patients, a sample across ages 18 to 80 and across 24 European countries. So you can't say, oh, well, they're genetically different in Eastern Europe where you looked at them, and that's why the result doesn't apply everywhere. And you can't say, oh, well, you're only looking at young people, and that's different. They looked at everything. So whatever they say goes. Right? This is heart disease. This is the answer to heart disease, you could say. So what did they see? Well, at first they saw, oh, my God, oh, oh embarrassing. A third of them were type 2 diabetics on their medical record already from the get-go of all of these people, regardless of age. But they looked close at the glucose. They were looking at oral glucose tolerance, A1C, fasting glucose, uh, two-hour glucose. They were looking at glucose closely, which no one usually does. So they saw that another quarter are full-blown type 2 diabetic. They just haven't been diagnosed. So now over half of them are full-blown type 2 diabetic. Right? It's a bit embarrassing. But when they looked at the data, they realized actually another quarter are they called it high risk for type 2 diabetes, but it was type 2 diabetes. It just hadn't reached the ridiculously high bar to be called it, but it was, it was frank type 2 diabetes. Three quarters of all the heart disease patients in Europe were type 2 diabetic. And as myself and Dr. Gerber and others pointed out, they didn't even test their insulin, and that's the earliest laboratory test for type 2 diabetes. Glucose doesn't show you most of the, or a lot of the people. You need to use insulin. So if they used insulin, they'd pick up another big chunk. See what I'm saying? Nearly the whole pie. Nearly the whole pie of cardiac disease is essentially insulin resistance type 2 diabetes. If you took that out, heart disease would not disappear. There's lots of special problems and arrhythmias, but it'd, it'd almost disappear. Insulin resistance, biggest game in town. Primary cause early death, just a quick reminder, if you search for insulin resistance and any of these conditions on our kind of board of death, you're going to have masses of papers to read in the scientific literature. So insulin resistance is connected intimately in hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of studies to all of these conditions I showed you, uh, because essentially it kind of underpins them all. It's insulin resistance is a model of accelerated aging, as Dr. Ron Rosedale said. It's a model of accelerated aging. If you push insulin resistance in a person, you accelerate their aging, and they're basically falling apart. Neuropathy, heart muscles, heart vessels, the brain, you know, Alzheimer's. Turn on insulin resistance in someone, and you start spinning the clock forward. If you view it that way, that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. So it's not just insulin resistance and blood glucose, because I keep talking about that. I just like focusing on the biggest thing, Pareto principle. And there's lots of other problems like inflammatory drivers, and obviously smoking is going to accelerate your aging. You ever see someone who smokes a lot? Particularly ladies, unfortunately. Um, you know, skin is affected. Everything's affected. So Autoimmune and infections can be a big problem, and mineral and vitamin deficiencies, like vitamin D deficiency, magnesium deficiency, they'll all destroy your machine too. But, but this is the big one and the primary diet-related one. So we, we focus on the biggie. Uh, and I just show they're linked to everything. Uh, interestingly, survey in the US around 2015, I think it was, 65% of procs of U.S. adults over 45, that group of all U.S. adults over 45, are pre-diabetic or diabetic, type 2. Um, and pre-diabetic is diabetic. Pre-diabetic is a nonsense. They call it pre because it's too embarrassing to call it diabetic and admit that two-thirds of your adults are diabetic. That's politically impossible. So no one's going to change that threshold. This is political. You can't deal with 65% have type 2 diabetes. Um, it's funny how a lot of this is political. And myself, Dr. Gerber, Professor Noakes, on my huge network around the world, generally would guess it's probably 80% if they measured insulin. 